Our lead story of the day is regarding yesterday's White House press briefing where the Associated Press and CNN questioned Karine Jean-Pierre regarding all these bank failures. Before we jump into that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, as well as leave us a nice sweet comment down below. Your help support would be greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and roll it. Early. Thank you. Um, two questions on banking. So the Treasury Secretary was on the Hill this morning testifying that the system remains sound and people can be confident about their deposits. When the President addressed the situation on Monday, <laughs> He said that he was going to ask Congress and the banking regulators to strengthen the rules for banks to make sure that this type of failure is less likely to happen in the future. At this point, can you be a little more specific in terms of precisely what the president is looking for from Congress and the banking regulators on this issue? So to answer uh, the, sec the first question, I guess, uh, we have seen bipartisan support on a piece of legislation, Warner Porter bill. Uh, and so we appreciate those folks putting their ideas together and putting that on the table. So we're going to work closely uh, at that bill and other regulatory changes as well. Uh, as you all know, the Obama Biden administration put in place tough requirements after the 2008 financial crisis to make sure that this sort of crisis would not happen again. But unfortunately, in the last administration in 2018, uh, some of those uh, rolled back some of some of those uh, regulations that would have been incredibly important as we move forward. Again, blame game. We did the episode on it the other day where the Biden administration and the Democrat Party are blaming Donald Trump for all of this because it's always his fault. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's always Donald Trump's fault or it's somebody else's fault like Putin or Xi Jinping over in China. It's somebody else's never, it's never Joe Biden's fault. And by the way, I'm not blaming Joe Biden on everything here. I mean, he was an idiot for giving everybody a stimulus check when COVID-19 took place. Not everybody needed a stimulus check, handing them out like they're freaking hotcakes, giving people multiple checks. I mean, the amount of fraud that took place, hell, that's a whole nother video. But it's amazing here how she's going to blame Donald Trump for all this, even though the guy that wrote Dodd Frank literally said it would not have done anything to stop what took place. The guy that actually wrote the damn thing said, hey, no, it wouldn't have stopped this whole thing from taking place. What happened happened. But she's going to push this whole narrative here because it's easy to point the blame at the orange bad man because nobody likes him because she has Trump derangement syndrome. Wait till we get in the CNN's follow up to that very point that she just made here regarding Dodd Frank and the regulations that were moved by Trump because her answer is just asinine. Uh, so as the president said, Congress and regulators must strengthen those rules for larger banks so that this doesn't happen again. And so again, there's a legislation that we are encouraged to see and, uh, and we'll you know, continue to work with Congress on what else, uh, what else can be done. Uh, and, uh, but as we know, we can't, uh, there's quite a bit that we can do uh, administratively, but without Congress, uh, there's not, without Congress, we can't fully deal with this issue. Uh, so as with your question on the regulators, uh, you know, already underway, the regulators at the, at the president appointed over the last few years, reversing the changes that we saw in, 2000, in 2018 uh, under the last administration, as I just mentioned. Uh, but that, again, but we need Congress to take a, uh, we can't let Congress off the hook and they need to take action. So it's going to take both of Congress and regulators uh, to strengthen those rules. And so that's what we're calling on uh, to do. And secondly, how about you not incentivize banks to make idiotic investments by bailing them out every time they fail and make idiotic investments. I mean, you've literally just eliminated almost all risk for investors or banks by incentivizing them to make very risky investments or idiotic investments by bailing them out. I mean, that's literally what you're doing. Sure, there's some people that are insured by the FDIC up to $250,000, but everybody else, which was basically almost everybody, in Silicon Valley Bank, you're just going to bail them out as well. So it's amazing to me how you're like, well, it's Congress, it's Trump, it's this, it's that. But at the end of the day, you're saying, well, we want to stop this from happening. No, you don't. Because if that was the case, you would let it fail and you wouldn't be bailing people out because they made extremely risky bet by having all their money or a lot of money in one bank rather than diversifying that over a course of many, many bank banks. But, you know, hey, they care about you guys and, and they want to stop this from happening. It's Trump's fault. It's everybody else's fault. Biden has no, no hand or play into this at all. There are reports that a group of banks and other financial institutions are working on a $30 billion or so plan to shore up First Republic Bank in California. Um, can you say what role the U.S. government has in terms of trying to pull this rescue, rescue package together? So I'm not going to comment on any specific actions or any specific institutions from here. 
because of the actions that the that the regulars took over the weekend at the president's direction, uh, depositors know that they are safe, and uh, and banks have access to resources to meet those de to meet those depositors' needs, but and demand. But I'm not going to get into any specific uh, situations from here. It's actually funny because she says she's not going to get into any specifics from there, but literally the next person's question, she literally gets into specifics and just tar starts talking about banks. So it's amazing how she's never, a, well, I'm not getting into hypotheticals, but then gets into hypotheticals later, or was talking about a hypothetical beforehand, but then was questioned about some sort of hypothetical later on during the same White House press briefing, but didn't want to elaborate on it because she's not going to talk about hypotheticals. You guys, it is so head spinning. I'm only showing you a few clips here because as you could see, it was like an hour long press briefing. A lot of it was just nothing burgers of her not answering questions or help flip it through her binder trying to find something. I mean, literally give you an example, and this isn't part of it, but somebody was asking her about the Willow Project and he mentioned the Willow Project in his question about three times. And you see her trying to flip through her binder looking for the answer about the Willow Project. And because she couldn't find it quick enough, she had to stop and go, um, your question again was uh, the Willow Project, right? It was about the Willow Project. And the guy was like, yeah, it's, it's about the Willow Project. And by her doing that, gave her enough time to kind of keep flipping and find something that had remotely to do with the Willow Project, about the, the oil drilling in Alaska. But here's CNN's follow-up about the Dodd-Frank regulation that was removed by Trump. And if it would have any impact on the whole thing, let's hear her response. And trust me, a little bit of a hypothetical here of which she already answered prior of which we just saw. Let's go ahead and roll it. Thanks, Kareem. Um, you, you referenced the Dodd-Frank uh, rules just a, a few moments ago. Do you believe that Silicon Valley, <clears throat> excuse me, do you believe that Silicon Valley's uh, <coughs> bank's failure could have been averted had those Dodd-Frank rules not been rolled back during the previous administration? So right now, and the president said this in his remarks on Monday, that we, we got to get a full accounting of what happened. We need to know exactly what happened uh, so we know who to hold accountable here. Uh, Folks, did you just follow that whole thing that we just did of her just blaming the Trump administration in the first clip that we just watched? And now she's saying, well, we, we don't really know what happened. We got to wait till all the information comes out. You just ripped the guy for saying, oh, well, he removed the regulations. And that's kind of what contributed to the collapse. And basically, if he wouldn't have done that, we would all be fine today. And now he's following up with the question of, well, did it actually contribute to it? Well, you know, I'm not, not really sure. because We haven't got all the information yet. We haven't even really done an investigation. You, got, you can't make this up. It's so great. We got a bunch of idiots running everything from our banks to our government. Just a bunch of idiots. Right now, uh, his economic team, the president's economic team, is focused on stabilizing the financial system and protecting depositors, not investors. We've been very clear about this. Uh, but again, it is not 2008. The banking system is far more resilient on a better uh, foundation, thanks to the tough requirements that you guys, I know I keep pausing it, but it's it's so crazy. There's so much content in like this first minute. Well, we're only we're gonna insure not the investors, but the depositors. They could be the same at the same time. You can be a depositor and investor at the same time. <laughs> They're literally bailing everybody out in SBB, regardless of whether you had two hundred fifty thousand dollars or more in there. You're getting your money back. So don't give me this BS of like, oh well, we're we're not bailing out the investors. We're we're bailing out the depositors. No, you're not. You're bailing out everybody were put in place by the uh, Obama-Biden administration. And I just said this moment moments ago, in 2018, we saw what the, the Trump administration did. Uh, they did roll back some of those tough requirements. But again, we need to see exactly, do a full, uh, full review, get a full accounting of what occurred uh, uh, so we can make sure to hold those uh, to account. And the administration moved to insure all deposits at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank through the FDIC's deposit insurance fund. So will that be the policy going forward for other bank failures? And in terms of future legislation, does the administration support changes to the existing $250,000 cap on uh, FDIC insurance limit for checkings and, and savings accounts? So again, I'm not going to uh, get ahead or go, get into hypotheticals on um, what uh, what the future is going to hold. Uh, and you just got done talking about a hypothetical. You literally just said we need more information about what happened to make certain claims. But yet you gave the whole claim that in 2018, Trump removed the regulations, the Dodd-Frank regulation about certain assessment risk that should be taken care of of anybody. What is it, like $50 billion or less in these companies? Regardless, you made an entire hypothetical and didn't have the information to back it up. So when you're questioned on it, you didn't know what to say. 
So now we're going to say, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to go forward. I'm not going to kind of beat the news headline. I'm not going to jump in front of the president on this. Whatever asinine thing she wants to phrase it as is totally, it's totally remarkable. And uh, and I've said this moments ago as well, which is, look, we need Congress to act uh, and uh, we need Congress to, to take a look of, of, of what else can be done. That's why we're supporting the legislation, the bipartisan legislation that I just mentioned. Uh, look, the president, as I mentioned also earlier, the president appointed uh, appointed uh, regular over the past two years uh, to reverse the changes that we saw uh, in the last administration. Uh, but again, Congress needs to act. As far as the 250,000 uh, deposit insurance limit, uh, we have we have more more to say on the specific regulatory changes in the next few days. I'm not going to get ahead of, of uh, what the regulators what the regulators are going to decide moving forward. But that's something that you guys are looking. I'm at. just not I'm just not going to get into specifics or get ahead of what they're what they're currently looking at or what we're going what they're going to be announcing. And you gotta love that aspect too, where she's like, "Oh well, uh, over the course of two years now, we put in uh, regulators to kind of combat what Trump did." Yeah, that did a lot of good, huh? That did real good with Signature Bank, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, Credit Suisse. I mean, it just has been working phenomenal right now. I mean, everything's just looking up, but yuppie. So. <laughs> She keeps going to like Trump and Congress. Well, they need to do something. How about you not bail out the bank? How about that to send a message real quick? They are so bad. It's so funny. They have a camel standing in front of them and they keep looking at all these gnats, very biblical reference, where it's like, yes, all you need to do is build a border wall and just put in Trump's policies and everything's going to figure itself out and have a PR movement of like, hey, stop coming illegally in the same way. You have a camel standing there right in front of you. Don't bail out the bank. Tell people if they put in risky investments, you're going to have to have the, the the consequences of if something goes south. That, that's that's life. That's the privatized sector. Like we saw yesterday with Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank talking about all this. But they have to make everything so difficult when it's not difficult. They're asinine. They're a bunch of idiots. But I know. I know we, we repeat ourselves. We kick our can down the road here of dealing with the Biden administration. But we got two years of this nonsense still. Still two years. I know. Some of you are like baffled going, holy crap, I didn't realize that it was going to take that long where we had that long left. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Bald Brad Show. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.